day, I'm Chris Muir and thanks for joining me in today's video where we're going to discuss working with the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service Location Based Service APIs. In order to use the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service Location Based Services, essentially there's two main tasks. Firstly, your service side developer must create the places, assets and devices that your mobile application will use. Now, they can either do this by the MCS user interface manually, creating and defining one by one, or they can be imported by a CSV file in bulk. Now, we'll talk about the concepts of places, assets, and devices more in a moment. Once the location-based data is created in MCS, it is ready for use. It is automatically exposed via REST APIs to all your mobile applications, and they can access this as long as they authenticate with MCS. While there are a number of different endpoints exposed by the API, the core endpoints the client developer will exercise are those for querying places, assets and devices. From there, the client side developer in Android, iOS, JavaScript or Windows writes in native code, making use of the native functionality for location-based services on their operating system to detect geofences and beacons. For example, in iOS, to work with maps and beacons, you use the iOS Core Location Services module. However, when that native code needs to know the location of a geofence or what beacons to monitor for, rather than hard coding these in the mobile application, you can either call the REST endpoints with raw HTTP calls that MCS exposes, or alternatively make use of the MCS SDK for each platform to query the location-based data for MCS that was created by the service developer. In this way, the location data isn't hard coded in your application. If it was, let's say the device IDs or the geofence latitude and longitudes, if these were hard coded in your application and this data was to change, you'd have to deploy a new app by the Apple Store or Google Play Stores, for example, with no guarantee the mobile users would download the update, which of course would then result in all sorts of problems as well. So rather the app, your mobile app, can source this data dynamically from MCS itself and you can manage this location-based data in MCS, change it as much as you want, and the app can just pick it up and use it without requiring a full redeploy of the app to the App Store. Okay, so let's change topics. To build location-based mobile applications that source their location data externally from MCS, MCS Location Services allows you to define places, assets, and their associated devices. So let's explore what each of these terms means and how you define them in MCS. A place is something like a, well, a shop or a factory where its location is static. And by this we mean their location isn't likely to change often, if at all. So you can imagine maybe a brick and mortar shop. It isn't just about to get up and start walking around, right? So here in MCS under the location option, we can define a place with a name such as, well, Chris's Emporium and Eastfield Shopping Centre. An optional label and description. And once created, you can define key value custom attributes against the places too, allowing you to store virtually anything against the place for your own purposes. For example, you might like to store a customer ID against a place so you can query further information about the customer who owns this particular location from your CRM system later on. Also with places, you can define a hierarchy of places. For example, you might define a parent level place Chris's Emporium, which represents the generic business, then individual child places to represent each single store like Chris's Emporium and Eastfield Shopping Centre that we have here. Overall, the purpose of defining a place is you want your mobile application to interact with the place's location, as we discussed in the previous videos. So, for example, your mobile app can query or the places within a radius of their location for entering and exiting geofences or for using beacons and devices that we're going to talk about in a moment. To support this, places may be optionally associated with GPS latitude and longitude coordinates or a geofence defined by a radius surrounding the latitude and longitude or a geofence defined by a polygon with three or more vertices where each vertice is identified by a latitude and longitude in turn. Alternatively, places may be associated with a device where a device may represent something like a beacon such as an iBeacon or an alt beacon or an Eddystone. In comparison, assets, for all intents and purposes, you can think of these as a moving place. Essentially something of value like a forklift 
or a hospital bed that you want to track its location. As you can see, assets have a name, label and description too, and are associated with a device that is used to identify the asset's location. As we explained earlier, devices are beacons, such as those based on Apple's iBeacon standard, which is for iOS, or the cross-platform Alt Beacon standard, or Google's Eddystone beacons. Now, in my hand, I have a beacon manufactured by Radbeacon, known as a Radbeacon Dot, which is capable of broadcasting all three standards and is a great device to test with. Beacons transmit a low-power Bluetooth signal, advertising their position and a bunch of identifiers, which mobile applications can use to determine their location. By looking the beacon's identifiers up that they've just detected, they look these up in a beacon registry. Now, what is a beacon registry? Well, that's essentially what MCS is. As an example here with my Rad Beacon Dot, it has a companion app for configuring its runtime settings. Now, as you can see in the projected screen here, the beacon has already been configured to broadcast just on the iOS iBeacon protocol with the following beacon UID, major and minor values to identify this specific beacon. Having set the beacon identities appropriately, I can then return to MCS and my predefined place, and then associate it with a beacon, an iBeacon to match my red beacon dot with the same UUID major and minor values. So later, after I place the beacon in the field, our mobile application at startup can query back these beacon identifiers and start monitoring for this specific beacon. Right, having defined your places, assets and devices, these are now ready for your mobile developer to use via the API REST endpoints, which they can either call via raw HTTP calls or a mobile client SDK that we provide. However, as a service developer, it's useful to have a look at the payloads on the request for responses and also to be able to test those. So let's see what MCS provides in this regards. Within MCS, under the APIs page, if you click on the Locations option for the Platform APIs, the Location-Based Service Test page loads to reveal the endpoints supported by the API. As you can see, you can query places, assets and devices using these generalised endpoints. Or you can also query the objects by ID too. For example, if we use the Places Query endpoint, we can query back our previously created place by sending this request payload via the POST method. And as you can see in the response, we get information about the place, its geofence and its devices. As another quick example, if we use the device's query endpoint here, I'm querying back all the devices that match this iBeacon UID value. Given this quick introduction to the MCS location-based services and APIs, stick with us in the next videos where we'll investigate hooking these services into your mobile applications and using the SDKs.